As they neared, the soldier could see a figure under a blood-stained blanket. Then the procession vanished into thin air. The uniforms later described by the century were exactly what sheriff's officers would have worn in the 14th century. And the procession took the route always followed after executions when headless bodies were brought to this chapel to be buried. But the most persistent haunting is said to take place just over there, in the bloody tower. Two young boys have been glimpsed playing in the tower. They are believed to be the spirits of two princes, nine-year-old Richard and the heir to the throne, 12-year-old Edward, the victims of a shocking crime. The boys were nephews of Richard III, England's favorite villain. Richard's enemies described him as malicious, wrathful, envious, little of stature, crook-backed. Still a controversial figure 500 years after his death. Some blame Richard for a series of treacherous murders, while others passionately defend him. What is known is that after the death of their father, King Edward IV, the two young princes were put under Richard's protection. Some say it was like assigning the fox to guard the chickens. For the princes stood between Richard and the crown. Richard had his nephews declared illegitimate and thus ineligible for the throne. He then confined them to the tower for their own safety, he said. For months they were seen playing on the battlements and in their room. But suddenly, in the autumn of 1483, the two boys disappeared, never to be seen again. No one knows exactly what happened, but with his nephews out of the way, the last obstacle between Richard and the throne was removed, allowing him to be crowned King of England. Forty years later, Sir Thomas More, himself later executed at the Tower, described in a book what he believed to be the fate of the boys. He said Richard had dispatched two of his men to the Tower. As the boys slept, they stole into the room. Then they smothered the two sleeping princes. More wrote, they gave up their souls unto the joys of heaven, leaving to the tormentors their bodies dead in the bed. According to More, they were buried under a great heap of stone. In 1674, workmen uncovered a chest just near here, in it were the skeletons of two children. In 1933, these were scientifically examined. From the bone formation and the structure of the teeth, it was concluded they were the skeletons of two boys, a 12-year-old and a 9-year-old, matching the ages of the princes. As befitting a future king of England and his brother, the two small bodies were interred at Westminster Abbey. But their hapless spirits linger in the bloody tower. Betrayed, abandoned, murdered, they cling to each other in death as they did in life. The ghosts of the two little princes are reminders of the ruthless history of Britain's early monarchy. And the spirit that appears in this area of the tower is connected to another king's murder termination. 
These rooms are the home of a particularly gruesome apparition. Anne Boleyn is the controversial figure in this story. Some champion her as a modern woman, vibrant, headstrong and intelligent. Her enemies saw her as an ambitious schemer with an arrogant, tempestuous spirit. Anne's boldness and independence enchanted King Henry VIII. The attraction would precipitate a major turning point in English history and a personal tragedy for Anne. The king was married to Catherine of Aragon but after 22 years, she failed to produce a male heir. For the young, flirtatious Anne Boleyn, it was easy to bewitch the king. He pined for her. He wrote her passionate love letters. Matters came to a head when she became pregnant. Expecting the son he so desperately wanted and needed to ensure the succession, the king convened parliament and had his marriage with Catherine annulled. And the divorce which followed caused the celebrated break with Rome and the beginning of Protestant England, of which Anne Boleyn finally became queen. But she gave birth to a girl, the future Queen Elizabeth I. Her second child, a longed-for boy, was stillborn. Henry grew tired of waiting for Anne to produce a son. His passions were aroused by a young lady in waiting, Jane Seymour. Where Anne had been the other woman, she was now the aggrieved wife. <laughs> 